Today I'm looking at the Kaiweats Smart Digital Multimeter. This is the model KM601. And uh, Kaiweats approached me and asked me if they wanted me to review their multimeter. And I uh, had a look on their website. I didn't know much about their products. I hadn't seen or heard of the company before. And they make some what looks to be rather good uh, quality equipment. And there was some interesting uh, multimeters which caught my eye. So I said, uh, yeah, send me out a uh, KM601 and I'll take a look. Now what I'm gonna do in this video today is show you what you get uh, with this particular meter and I'm also gonna compare it to my Fluke 115 uh, True RMS multimeter. This is the multimeter, my go-to one that I've used for oh, probably the past 10 years. Before we continue, I'd just like to give a shout out to PCBWay. PCBWay offer a variety of services for those interested in electronics and prototyping, including manufacturing of high quality printed circuit boards, PCB assembly services, SMD stencil, CNC and 3D printing. This month, PCBWay have their 2021 Christmas Big Sales campaign where you can get free Christmas coupons, special offers up to 92% off, lucky draw and even more specials and deals. These offers end December 31, so don't miss out. Check the link in the description below. So I'm not gonna do the regular unboxing videos as they normally do, but I will show you exactly what you do get. One thing that did disappoint me when I opened up this uh, particular box was the user manual here is a bit, a bit misleading. You'll have a look there that the front is in plain English, but you open it up and there's no English in the actual um, manual itself. If you skim through, none of these pages are in English at all. Um, it's a bit disappointing because obviously the front of the manual uh, has the uh, English written on it, so you'd assume that there'd be English in the manual. Uh, there is a QR code for a video instruction on how to use the multimeter, which I did watch and it is handy, but um, yeah, for those who uh, do like to get a nice manual with that you can follow along, um, yeah, you don't really get it with this with this multimeter. But anyway, that doesn't really stop you. Uh, the multimeter is fairly easy to use. It does come with six batteries. Now there's three uh, that I've got packed out here, and uh, and I've got three in the meter. They it does use triple A's. You can see here that the meter uh, comes in this hard case, which is uh, it's pretty tough. Um, I would imagine that this could be really useful if you're using this on a job site. You'll notice too that with the hard case, if you look side down, it actually is above where the buttons are. So if you do drop this on its face, I don't think you're gonna be breaking the screen or, or any of the buttons. So um, that is handy. One thing that you do have to do is obviously you have to put the batteries in it. So you can slip off this uh, case, which can be a little bit difficult to get off. Um, so if you start at the bottom there and pop that off, um, the case just comes off. You'll notice that there's a screw here. So if you undo that, don't lose the screw because it is pretty tiny. This big back cover comes off. And one thing that's interesting to me is I'm not quite sure why it's such a big back cover when you actually, you've only got these little three batteries down here. I probably would have, if, if it were me, it probably would have been easier to just have a little clip uh, that you could undo and swap the batteries out. It's a little bit annoying that you need a screwdriver to actually put the batteries in. That said, you shouldn't have to replace the batteries uh, that often. One good thing is that I like about this meter is it does use triple A's. The Fluke meter that I have uses a nine volt battery. Um, again, the Fluke does come with a, uh, a, a, you do have to use again, you have to use a screw to undo it, but there is a nine volt battery that sits there. Nine volts are not as common, at least not in my household anyway. You know, you might find them in the smoke alarm or something like that. So uh, I find that using triple A's is a very good move. So I do like that. So before we turn the meter on, let's just have a look what else you get. So you do get this nice carry case, which is great. Um, I don't have one of those for my fluke. I've actually got a little um, pouch, which I'll get here. It's just a little homemade, um, yeah, soft pouch. So this will really protect the meter, which is good. Uh, you get a set of test leads. The only thing with these test leads, um, and it's not just the it's not just these, but it's on a lot of multimeter test leads. The ends are very very sharp, so be careful not to to uh, prod yourself with those. So uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty standard leads. Um, it also comes with a thermocouple, so you can measure temperature. So that's handy. 
Um, that's just a standard standard thermocouple. Um, yeah, so I like that that uh, case. That's very nice. So on the top here is a power button. Uh, there's also a non-contact voltage um, induction type coil. My fluke doesn't have it, so that's handy. I've actually got a separate um, probe for that, so that's going to come in handy. Uh, you got the torch. Here on the bottom is where all of the probes go in. And you'll notice that there's four 10 amp, milliamp, common resistance, capacitance, the diode test, continuity, voltage, and everything else. And it's a nice color screen, which is uh, pretty cool. It goes straight into an auto function. So you can see that it's cycling through. So this auto mode just detects automatically what you're trying to do. If you click auto, uh, the auto function button, the big red one here in the middle, it actually goes into a manual mode. So at the moment, it's going to be measuring DC voltage. Um, you can see here on the little uh, meter at the top there what we're measuring. You can also select the range and the decimal point uh, will move to whatever range you want to, to measure on the meter. If you we cycle through here, so we've got uh, ohms, so we've got resistance we can measure um, along the bottom as well. Continuity, uh, diode testing, capacitance, uh, millivolts. Uh, which is very handy sometimes if you're measuring those really low voltages. You'll notice too that as you cycle through these, the ports actually light up and they tell you where your probes need to be plugged into. So that's pretty cool. Um, very That can be very handy, I suppose, if you haven't uh, used a meter before or you're not quite sure. I, one thing that it will come in handy for, I know that I've done <laughs> current tests before and I've had it hooked up uh, through the voltage probe <laughs> through the wrong way. So um, that ends up blowing up internal fuses. So that could come in handy to just give you a bit of a visual indication of what you're supposed to be measuring. Uh, the NCV, and then we've got current uh, here as well. And I noticed that it actually lights up red at the top, so it really reminds you to what to use. So Let's do some uh, measurements and I'll compare it against the fluke here and see uh, what kind of differences we've got. So I've got the probes just uh, in the bottom here. It's currently on auto, but if I select the manual function, you can see there that it selects DC. Um, if you have, or if you hit the select button, you can select AC and it is true RMS there as well as it says. There's also a max min button as well. so. You can measure your voltage and then click the max uh, min button to see what the maximum and the minimum voltage was uh, when you were measuring. So if you've got fluctuations, you can measure those. There's also a hold and release button. So if you want to hold a voltage uh, measurement, then you can, if you need to take a photo or something, I guess. So um, let's measure a DC voltage. So I've just got my power supply here on the bench. Okay, so 13.71 and there's a little voltage scale, of course, down the bottom. So 13.71 volts. So I'm going to bring along my fluke and let's have a look and see. And this is gonna require a couple of hands. Okay, so my fluke reads 13.74 volts. Now, as I said, I'm I'm using so I've got two different test leads. I'm using the, the test leads that come with the Kuwaits and the test leads that come with the fluke. They're probably around about the same length. Um so you know that's that's pretty close um, it's a uh, very very marginal difference there okay so we'll measure an AC voltage now so don't forget I'm on the DC scale I need to select the AC uh, scale there so we'll see what comes up wait for it to range so 49.9 or 50 Hertz I saw it pop up there 237.3 volts and the fluke says 238.3. So about a one volt difference there. Um, my so that's uh, so that's interesting. Let's just have a look. So 49.95 hertz. So that's exactly what I expect here in Australia. We've got 50 hertz uh, power. But uh, yeah, 230, 238. So about a volt. About a volt difference, a little bit of fluctuation up and down there. Now, one thing that the Fluke doesn't have is the NCR, oh, the NCV, sorry. So let's give that a, a whirl. 
So you basically just hit NCV and you've got the little induction coil here. So I've got my 240 volt line and it beeps and says that that's got voltage on it. So we'll measure here, this is a 1K resistor. Um, so 0 0.997 and the fluke is dead on 1000, 1000 ohms, 1K. So yep, it's pretty accurate there. So continuity is pretty simple check. There we go, continuity test. And if you wanna grab one of these meters, there is an affiliate link in the description below. Currently the KM601 is on sale. It is 46 US dollars at the time of recording. Uh, on sale down from 55. So my final thoughts on the Kuwait KM601 meter. Uh, I really like it. I think that it's a very good multimeter. It's gonna come in handy for me to use as a secondary meter. Sometimes I do forget to pack this if I'm ever using it out and about and I have left it at home. This meter will probably stay in the car and then that way I've got this one for use at home and this one for use uh, elsewhere if I ever forget uh, ever forget this meter. But I mean, this is a great meter. It's It seems to be accurate for the measurements that I'm gonna be using it for. Um, the only things that I did notice, so the Fluke, which I do like, does have this handy stand, so you can stand the meter up. Um, the Kuwait's doesn't have that, so you might need to prop it up against something. Um, the Fluke um, probably can be broken. The, the knob does protrude out quite a bit uh, here. Um, the screen maybe could be broken in some regards, although it is protected a little bit here. Um, there are also bits here for the uh, multimeter probes. Uh, but for this, I mean, the quits, I mean, you could you could drop it and you're not going to, to damage it. Um, the buttons are all flush as well. It's got the flashlight. It's got the NCV on the top. So it's got a lot going for it. And I mean, it's, it's pretty cheap, like less than 50 bucks for a decent uh, multimeter. And... Um, something that's essential in every electronic enthusiast toolbox is a, as, is a good multimeter. Another thing that I noticed when using this meter was that in direct sunlight, it was a little bit hard to see the screen. You can see here as I'm moving the camera around and the meter around in the sunlight, you can see it in some parts, but it is a bit difficult. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so check it out. Again, there's a link in the description if you want to grab one of these Kuwait's KM601 meters. Thank you very much for watching.